In the not too distant future, next Sunday AD, there was a guy named Joel, not too different from you or me. He worked at Gizmonic Institute, just another face in a red jumpsuit. He did a good job cleaning up the place, but his boss didn't like him, so they shot him in the space. the boy da -dim, da -da -dee -da, mad about the boy <laughs> what a cute shape on me huh check me out eh Woo. there you go all done <laughs> today I am a real live boy Mazel tov. <laughs> hey, hi crow hi time hi. hi everybody welcome to the satellite of love I'm Joel Robinson you might remember me as the guy who was accidentally shot into space and then the hell? Oh. Tom Servo, you're naked! Naked and beautiful, Joel. The human body in all its many shapes and sizes is a wonder to behold. Today I begin a new, no longer Tom Servo mere robot. I emerge from my metal chrysalis. Tom Servo, real live boy! Ha <laughs> ha! Snips and snails and puppy dogs' tails. That's what Tommy's made of. <laughs> yeah, really? Uh, no, paint, actually. Yeah. Tom, you know, I knew this was going to happen sometime. You're experiencing the Pinocchio syndrome. Oh, nonsense, brother. It has always been my dream to be a real live boy and now, I am that thing. But Tom, why do you want to be a real live boy? There are billions of real live boys on Earth. There's only one Tom Servo. I want to run and jump and skin my knees. Uh, you don't have any legs. I want to catch frogs down at the old swimming Your hole. arms don't work. I want to experience the world of emotions and feelings. You'll get beat up because you're a freak. Oh. Five <laughs> seconds to commercial sign. Now I know I'm a real boy. I can hear my heart breaking. It's okay. The commercial it's sign okay. now. Sitting here, smiling, watching Tommy grow. Uh, I'm still wet, you know. Oh, I think you're stuck. Oh. Ah. Gee, uh, Servo, you're going to have to touch up your skin. I can see that. Don't you think I can see that? Sure, spit. Yeah. That's really pink, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, uh, Buffy and Hildegard are calling. Get this. Oh, Joel, the stories I could tell of... Frenzied bachelor parties and exotic dancers jumping out of cakes. Sounds exciting? Sure. But around midnight, there you are, frustrated and disappointed with a fake cake you can't eat and a dancer named Candy who has to leave to drive her babysitter home. What have you got? Nothing. That's why we've combined dessert and objectifying the human body in one easy cake mix. Cake and shake. A real exotic dancer included. <laughs> That's right, Clay. Now gluttony and exploitation serves eight. And just think, now even mom, dad, and the kids can enjoy a Chippendale dancer at little Jimmy's seventh birthday party. Oh, Clay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> can I tempt you with some dessert? Oh, Frank, <laughs> this looks wonderful. You've outdone yourself. Uh, just a sliver. Oh, it was nothing. I merely follow the easy-to-read instructions right on the box. And hey, here's a tip. Just fold the exotic dancer right into the cake. That way you save a step. You don't have to wait for the cake to finish baking. I'll remember that for my cake for the next bake sale. You what? You baked a person in it? An hour at 3.50? Start digging, Frank. I get the rose. Just dig, Duncan Hinder. <gasps> oh, it's beefcake. Hey. Don't see, because he's... Hush. 
really anyway, good. sirs, our invention this week is based on the old American tradition, the junk drawer. Yeah. Hey, did you know that Benjamin Franklin invented the junk drawer? And were he alive today, he might have invented the new American tradition, the junk drawer organizer. <sighs> Finally, there's a place in this world for those strange keys, ketchup packets, that linoleum knife with the point broken off, all those things that, until now, had defied the laws of sequential occurrence in space and time. Yeah, and how many times have you gone rooting through your junk drawer, muttering to yourself, where'd I put that gun? Well, now there's a place for it. <laughs> and, and there's a place for round band-aids, and for that handful of gravel that might be agate, and your shoehorn, and those two-inch pieces of string that might come in handy someday. Mm-hmm. Hey, there's even a separate compartment for miscellaneous grit and lint. Already built in. So you don't have to. Well, what do you think, sirs? We could get into a lot of trouble for this, Frank. Oh, Joel, um, uh, everything's fine, nothing to see here. Uh, your feature presentation is a film called I Accuse My Parents. Uh, you figure it out. Uh, enjoy it with the short about truck farming. <laughs> We're gonna have to answer to the Chippendale Corporation for this, Frank. Oh, hey. The Jaws of Life, man! Get the Jaws of Life! Cake? <gasps> I'm better. No! <laughs> Easter Bunny Films presents... Truck Farmer, the special edition. Includes scenes the studio originally thought too graphic for audiences. I wonder if they sold this film door to door. Hmm? The Donner Party. Century ago, hmm. Our forefathers moved west across the vast and fertile plains of our growing nation. Hunting for good land searching for a place to farm. Most Help of us! us! Time as romantic and exciting. Most of us think that these people were really free. But they were just stupid. They were restricted in many ways. Today, we take a number of foods. Sorry, cross the Guernsey. But most of the year, they <laughs> ate little but meat and staples. Here's a five-inch nail for dessert. Winter Go for nuts. Them meant the end of most fresh vegetables. Their opportunities for a balanced diet disappeared. Instead, now, they ate the yellow the snow. Of snow covers the northern part of our country. People Three die. Great truck farming areas supply the constant demand for fresh vegetables. Florida is one of the areas. Even during bitter northern winter, harvesting goes on in Florida. These select few are making three cents a day. Let's take you back to the days when DDT was safe. And in California, in the Salinas Valley and other areas, lettuce for the salads and sandwiches of a nation is harvested fresh in winter oh, time. Oh, you know, everything looks so good on this salad bar. Oh, heavens yes, everything looks so fresh and delightful. I'm just gonna have a small salad, maybe some soup, and then treat myself to some froyo. Dish. Mm. Oh, where else are people exploited? In the down on the, the southern River border. River, skilled hands shape bundles of fresh carrots in January. In recent decades, truck farming has become big business. But not for these people. A lot of factors help, but no one can deny the important role of power machinery. Ah, it's Killdozer! Ah. Clint Walker, no! Here, thousands of acres of rainforest are cleared away. Who cares? Stupid trees. God, I hate them. Early tractor pulls. Not that much fun. This is the freestyle competition. Don't see many of these trees anymore. Well, down it goes. Well, the sad thing is this guy doesn't even work for anybody. He's just doing this for kicks. Mm. Well, here as anointed by God, man holds dominion over his earth. Here we go. By hand, the land would have taken weeks of hard labor to clear. Stick farmers. But now trees and brush can be cleared and burned in days. Well, that's cheerful. And the land readied for the plow. Speed the plow. I'm thinking of telling my wife I love her. Nah, forget it. Not worth it. Go, Speed Farmer! Go, go Speed, speed farmer. farmer! Go, go Speed farmer, farmer! Go! After plowing, a seed bed is prepared by a modern disc harrow, breaking up the clods of earth. 
There's something you don't see every day. It's a farmer with all his limbs. <laughs> Sorry. Now, Duck News. Here's Hugh McQuacken. Harrowing, isn't it? <laughs> Harrowing ca- farmer joke. Uh, and then yeah. planting and fertilizing. Hmm? Fertilizer, awesome. which not only increases the yield but adds to the food value of the vegetable, hmm? is added to the soil through one set of hoppers, while the other set of hoppers plants the seed. And remember, be sure to use lots and lots of chemicals Finally, for a good crop. Begins. Even cultivating is done with the help of modern machinery. In some places, a rotary hoe is used to destroy weeds. You know, I saw that on Children of the Corn. Most farmers like to listen to Igor Stravinsky when they farm. But where mechanical means are dangerous, chemical cultivation is often used. Specially selected chemicals that destroy weeds without injuring vegetables are sprayed in the field. Hooray for chemicals! Here in southern Texas, there is an additional problem. Texan. Adequate supplies of water. The Rio Grande, with the help of the truck farmer, makes up for the scanty amount of rain. Yeah, let me harness this thing here. Well, I'll be damned. I'm in Mexico. Upriver, a huge dam ensures a constant supply of water the year the around. Incredible, man. A complicated system of irrigation is oh, used. Oh, real complicated. Great care is taken to see that none of the precious water is wasted. I wanted to be a choreographer. Oh, this is an artistic view of farming. <laughs> I love you, Earl. Uh, not here, Tom. I love you. No. <laughs> no. Charlie Varick is employed. On large farms, the speed and versatility of the airplane is often used to control insect pests by quickly dusting wide areas. Some farms use mechanical sprayers in the field. There's nothing we can't spray. Finally, plants ripen. Now this tomato is highly deformed, but cut off the eyes and it's good eating. The last few days of growth bring the vegetables to their peak. I'm peaking, man. The fields fill with people, and a complex system of harvesting goes into high gear. Lyndon Johnson. Yeah. Ripening like tomatoes are carefully picked by experienced up. hands. Uh, one, two, three, four. Farm income from the sale of Five. peas and other vegetables averages more than a billion and a half dollars a year. But he'll see Much none of, of it. Income goes to truck farmers who raise winter I'm vegetables. I'm so happy. Annual farm income produced by vegetables alone is nearly as great as yearly farm income produced by the sale of bread grains. Come on, work, damn it, work. You got a bean in your pocket, I know it. <laughs> oh, take your time, Al. Many truck crops, like carrots, are harvested by hand labor. Cheap, abused hand labor. Here in the Rio Grande Delta, Mexican citizens who cross the border on temporary work permits help. They make it sound so nice. I'm from Canada. What am I doing here? A preteen is put to work. Her beauty will soon fade. While some carrots are topped in the field and sent to market in pliofilm bags, many are harvested and processed intact. Oh, the great Hank gets to work on the truck. A layoff, I'm sick today. <coughs> uh, let's see, what am I gonna have for dinner tonight? Car no, not the carrots. The job has now become a race against time. Well, hey, I'm stacking them as fast as I can. Carrots are taken to a packing plant where a highly mechanized uh. process of preparation for market begins. Here they are interrogated. The organized along factory lines. The carrots are washed first. They're made flavorless, so people will buy steak. When they are topped in the field, the process is rapid. Rabbit? Some, of course, are cat. And turned into carrot paints. Some carrots are frozen. Some carrots are humiliated publicly. Untopped carrots are packed with chipped ice to ensure freshness. High energy prop comic carrot tops also packed in ice. Soylent green is made from people. 
Hey, can I borrow your finger a second, Len? Good. Despite the speed and efficiency of the process, great care is taken with the vegetables. Varied skills are applied at all stages of the process. I love my rubber apron. <laughs> An automatic machine puts a top on the crate, and the finished box is passed along on a series of rollers directly to a refrigerated railroad car, where it is loaded immediately. Then sent back to the farm and put back into the ground. It actually makes no sense whatsoever. <laughs> More ice is poured into the refrigerator car to make sure that the carrots are kept fresh. Refrigeration, like the development of powered farm machinery, is vital for large-scale truck farming. Later, this device is used to beat Just back the workers. Just as important is rapid transportation. <laughs> the race to market enters the final stages. Ah, uh, we haven't worked out all the kinks yet. All over the Slow. northern part of the nation, in the cities and towns, the delivery of these products is now taken for granted. Yes, the South starves while the North eats Today, healthily. Truck farming is a big business. Vital to the health of our nation. Wait a minute, has anybody seen a truck yet? Without yeah. it, the balanced diet so necessary for our well-being would be difficult indeed to achieve during the winter months. Ah, oh, J. Edgar Hoover goes shopping. Hmm, let's see. Well, it isn't meat, but I suppose I better buy some of these just for appearances. Cucumber. Because of our truck farmers, the vitamins and minerals to be found in fresh vegetables are, are now readily available all year long in all parts of our vigorous nation. Praise the truck farmer! Bow down before him! Worship the truck farmer at the church of your choice. Offer burnt sacrifices to the almighty truck farmer! Hail, Hail truck, truck farmer! farmer. Hail, Hail truck farmer! Penile Replacement Corporation Pictures presents... Tea House of the August Moon. The John Bradshaw Story. <laughs> yeah, as long as it's not John Hughes. Indeed. Yeah. Oh, Robert Lewis. Hey, we didn't get to read... Oh. Mm -hmm. Music by the Little Rascal. <laughs> oh, songs. I hope this isn't a musical. They laughed when I accused my parents and I killed them. Let's see if they'll be laughing now. Did you know that the role of Al Frazier was the most coveted role at that time? Really? Wow. Sam Newfield, he directed Jungle Goddess. Oh, well, that... Ah! Part four, Citizens on Patrol. Hey, where's the cantankerous but funny bailiff? Who's there? James Wilson, during the progress of this trial, you have refused to testify in your own defense. And by your silence, have prevented your counsel from adequately defending you. You can't handle you the truth! With manslaughter. And in the evidence presented, in the absence of explanation, would warrant this court in finding you guilty. Before we go any farther, I urge you once again to speak, if there is anything you can say in your own defense. Uh, sorry, I was looking at your mole, sir. Kiss the day goodbye. Blondie, no! I like jello. Give him hell, Harry. Well, maybe I shouldn't say this, Your Honor. But I'm Esther Roll. But I, I accuse my parents. We have a title! Yes. We have a title, yes! Whoa, oh, that's making me sick. Well, that was a short movie. <laughs> have order in this court. Oh, if only I was Hunts Hall right oh, now. Oh, Tell us exactly what is in your mind. You know, stuff. Well, Your Honor? I don't believe my mother and father should have ever had a child. I was abused as a zygote. I don't believe they ever wanted the responsibility. Well, everybody's settled in. Well, they were ever unkind to me. They gave me everything I ever wanted except... Pancakes. ...time and attention. And money. I learned to put myself to bed when I was four or five years old. 
and to get my own breakfast if they weren't up yet when it was time to go to school. Yeah, boo-hoo, we all have problems. Did you get along well in school? Oh, yes, sir, I liked it. I had some pretty good friends among my classmates. Hey, a simple yes or no will do. And now I'm going to announce the winner of the essay contest. Sergeant, take the gun and shoot the corporal. We are very proud that this honor has fallen to a pupil of our school, James Wilson, for his mm. splendid essay. I won, I won. <laughs> Come forward, James. Well, maybe he just suspects his parents at this point. I would like to quote a closing line from James' essay, which made a particular appeal to the judges. All life is In travesty. In American home, the father Conform. is happy to care Conform. for his Conform. wife, Conform. who is happy to Conform. care for her children, and they are thankful for their happiness and security. When I accepted the woman, And now we have to meet I... your mother, James. We want to know the woman who has inspired this splendid essay. Joan Crawford? The Committee of Mothers is meeting here tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Oh, it's BYOM. To discuss plans for the graduation exercises. And we'd love to have your mother serve on the committee, James. Oh, I don't have a mom. My dog sure ate her. be pleased. Um, Very well, James. Oh, boy, oh, boy. I won. I won. After 11 years in high school, I finally won something. Hey, everybody lives in that house. Yeah. Mom, mom. Mama. Oh, no. Mom's in the bottle again. Oh, it looks like Mom invited Joey Lewis over again. Well, she tidied up the place. Oh, left me some. Hmm. Went to store, scotch in fridge, love Mom. Buy yourself another mother. Hmm. And there it says, P.S. Say yes to Martini and Rossi on the Rocks. Say yes. It's terrible. She drank all that gin. <laughs> Ironically, the humorful part is he buys liquor with the ten bucks. Oh, <laughs> <he does. laughs> Where do I start? It all looks so good. Now the vodka clashes with the coffee table. Mom is hot. Oh. Oh. Jimmy? Oh, hello, Shirley. Is your mother home? No, she isn't. Oh, never mind. I didn't want to see her especially. Besides, I can see her later. Okay, who are you? You can offer me a drink if you wanna. And I think you wanna. Sure, help yourself. Just pick a Thanks. table. The who's progressive dinner here. Well, how about you? Come on, join me. Can't do any more than kill you. <laughs> no, thanks. Not for me. I've been hitting it too hard lately. Yeah, I know. It's kind of tough when it gets the best of you. Well, here goes for both of us. Hey, that's my booze. Huh. Looks like you're having yourselves a time, you two. Suddenly the thin man enters. What goes on here? This is my first. I wouldn't know about Jim. Beam. Mother home yet? No. Means another cold supper, I suppose. Vodka oh, sandwiches. Who what can you expect? Nine times out of ten, if she did stay home all day cooking, you'd phone the last minute you had a business day and couldn't make it. You're the Greek chorus? You women certainly stick together, don't you? Not necessarily. I'd rather stick to an attractive man. Dad, Anytime. do you mind? Oh, warden. <laughs> Home so early, Dan. I was a half hour late, but I was only detained on business. You probably had more important things to do. Well, you needn't be so cross about it. I'm sorry if I'm late, but the buses are so crowded and I couldn't get a taxi. I suppose you couldn't have tried an hour earlier. No, I couldn't. Fix my little drink, James. I, I, I'm exhausted. But from drinking so much. Are we going to have any dinner tonight? In a minute. It's all in the icebox. Hey, could somebody serve. please do an intervention? Can I have a bite with her, Shirley? Oh, no, thanks. I have a date. Another time, then. Thanks. Ready for our date? Well, may the best man win. Who is that? I've had just about enough of this. I won't put up with it any longer. What are you talking about? The whole setup. No decent meals on time. The house is always in a mess while Dad, you're I, gadding about making a fool of yourself. Got an, a, a, you do what you please. Why shouldn't I do what I please? That's I, I, okay I, with me. The teacher but said you're it, not going to do it while you're my wife. Your... That suits me. You don't suppose I like going on like this, do you? I'd have divorced you years ago if it hadn't been for Jimmy. Mother, Dad, please. A lot of help you've been to him. A fine home you've made for him. But I got How about the example you've set him? Out was... gambling every night. Sometimes not even coming home at all. Really well, good I to do something to pass the time. Teacher thought it was a good... man home to a place like this. Then why do you to... come home? Maybe I won't in the future. But I can't... Dad. Fresh in your drink? You. Oh. Yes, sir. Something about school. I won the essay contest and the principal said that... I'll say that's fine. Here's five dollars. 
Go out and celebrate. Spend it on loose leaf paper. There goes a great man. <laughs> what about my five dollars? <laughs> This guy's made more money today than I did all the way through high school. He'll be back. Another woman. I don't care whether he comes back or not. Won't be any different if he does. Well, maybe it will. You see, I didn't tell that all that happened at school today. The principal wants you to meet with the parents' graduation committee tomorrow at 11. Mrs. Carlisle and Mrs. Whitney are going to be there. All the most important women in the neighborhood. Is there a bar? Oh, and they really want me to be there. Oh, sure they do. And I want you to go, Mom. Yeah, and they need a You'll laughing stop. one there. I could wear my new afternoon dress and that hat I just bought. Oh, wait till he gets filled with that hat. <laughs> Okay, so is everybody done with their art therapy project? Joel, what's the point of this art therapy stuff anyway, huh? Well, by having you draw pictures of your idealized family, maybe you can escape some of the deep psychological problems that Jimmy, the star of today's movie, suffered because of his family. So let's see what you draw on, okay? This is Crows. That's, that's my dad. He's all powerful. His hands are made of stainless steel, and he has lasers that shoot out of his chest. Pew, pew. I don't have to tell you, he's the coolest dad in the whole neighborhood. And we go one we go to father-son picnics, we win every event. And, and he dispenses homespun wisdom and teaches solid Midwestern values while crushing all who block his path. Uh -huh. What about the handlebar mustache? I don't know. Uh -oh. Okay, let's see here. Uh, oral obsession with mustache indicates nasal labial shame. Good, okay. Now let's see yours here. Tom, what's this? Okie doke. Uh, that's my mom, my dad, and my mom. My mom is Haley Mills, my dad is Gigantor, and my mom is Peggy Cass. Uh-huh, and why are your moms uh, holding hands, Tom? I don't know. Oh, okay. Let's see. Latent parent trap syndrome. Imagine. Straight okay, Gypsy, well, oh. this one's really nice. What's yeah. this one? Uh, Joel, uh -huh. my ideal family is right here, and I know Richard Basehart watches over us all. Uh. Oh, that's really sweet, Gypsy. But tell me, why does Richard Basehart get to play God? Well, I don't know. Uh, Joel, why are you spending your time psychoanalyzing robots? Um, I don't know. I'm kidding, of course. We'll be right back. I do know. <laughs> I really do know. <laughs> what? That's so funny. <laughs> Joe Bolster, he just cracks me up. The mirror ought to tell you. <laughs> I'm getting ready to go to Jim's school. Well, you certainly look the part. <laughs> Why don't you act your age? Stop criticizing me. You don't like my clothes. You don't like my hat. You don't like it if I sit around here. You don't like it if I go out. Oh, well, let's stop this ridiculous farce. Why don't we quit? I, I like your Great hat. idea. Thanks for the suggestion. So they're divorced now? Well, that was easy. Hmm. Mm, he's a good husband. He just has a hard time expressing his feelings. <laughs> She's got a sea anemone on her head. <laughs> mirror, mirror, on the wall. Can I make it to last call? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to work on the decorating committee. Oh, isn't that swell? Some of us girls thought we could bring some flowers. I'm going to build a blimp and fight the Nazis. to win the contest. I think he should read it at the graduation exercises. Why, well, yes, what an excellent idea. Wow, the whole school oh, seems to be nice. buzzing about that essay. Mm -hmm. my home, that's all. It's the way any other fellas is. <laughs> the way a home ought to be. A very happy home, obviously. I'm most anxious to meet your mother. Oh, Mom's swell. Liar! 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 Even if I had a lot of brothers and sisters. She must take a great interest in her home. She does. That's all she thinks about. Well, that and twist well, off caps. What's more important when you come right down to it? A woman's job is her home and family, isn't it? At least that's the way my mom figures. Hello, everybody. Oh, and did I tell you she drinks? Sorry if I'm late. Miss Reardon drinks a lot. I'm Jimmy Wilson's mother. <laughs> <laughs> She's drunk. It's funny. How oh, shocking. Eleanor Roosevelt's Jimmy. pissed. Ooh. How terrible. <laughs> mom. Did you bring another glass? Am I late? I, I, when's the meeting start? Come on, Mom, let's go home. Oh, what's your hurry? Aren't you going to introduce me? Some other time, Mom. Please, come on, let's go home. Well, so long, Mrs. Home. Um, Lush, was it? Yes. Hurry, Jimmy. I want to go to the meeting. Later in prison. <laughs> She's drunk. It's funny. How oh, shocking. I wish my peers would get out of my head. I'm trying to sleep. I'm you walking. Yes, indeed, I'm talking. I accuse my parents of He wants to turn his essay into a screenplay. Oh, there's some people from Lorimar who are interested. 
wanted mother. Hmm. Did you ever sell shoes before? Uh, no, sir. A uh, young you Al Bundy. Oh, yes, if you give me a try. You live with your parents? Uh, yes, sir. Oh, you look like a good boy. I think hey. I'll put it away. Mm. Now, the job pays $25 a week, and you get an hour off for lunch. You've got to be here every morning at 9, work till 6. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay, and I'll show you the stop. Hey, he sneezed all over the window. Yeah. Let her out. Let her out. She's frozen. Oh, she's a frosted mini pearl. <laughs> Ahead. The big goober over here and down there. Oh, I get it. You want to see my knees. <laughs> Why did he spray Desinex all over the window? He just doesn't get it, does he? No, no, you're ruining it for me. I want you to put on some shoes. Oh, come on, just clean the whole window. Jeez. Your mother's in detox. Come quickly. Ah, get in here. Jeez. Ah, that's a good idea. Please don't touch the customers, Jim. You interested in something in shoes? No, a fish sandwich. What do you think? Yes. I'd like to see those suede slippers in the window. The black ones with the bows. I won an essay contest. <laughs> My mom doesn't drink. Oh. Some shoes. Some shoes. Some shoes. <laughs> you better let me help you. Oh, that's all right. Cruel shoes. Oh. <laughs> Ow. I like your underwear. Yeah. Oh. Hey, you! Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. There's cheese in here. Oh. Brennick. Da 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 da. Eights? Well, you better try again. There's something wrong. I'll try again. There's something's wrong. <laughs> better with your hand out. Oh. Well, it says here your feet don't exist. Sixes. That's <laughs> sixes. <laughs> oh, my area. <laughs> Organ, push the earth shoes. I got it now. Can I show you something in a size me? <laughs> Hey, those are our old shoes. These are red goose shoes, so you get a free egg. I got my thumb caught. Jesus, it's a good thing she's not trying on a girdle. Mm. What do you think? Beautiful. The shoes, I mean. Oh, oh, I'll do. Oh. They look like they might have been made for you. They probably were. My husband is Buster Brown. I'm a fatalist. I believe that everything happens as it should happen. Just like my coming in here and buying these shoes from you. You really believe that? Of course. How much are they? Uh, $9.95, including tax. Oh, you'll have to send them COD. Oh, I'm sorry. We can't do that. Well, I mean, we don't make deliveries, see? I mean, you're oh, a bad well, person. Uh, I, I mean... I don't live very far. Maybe you could drop them off on your way home. Yeah, maybe I could. My name's Kitty Reed. Oh, yeah. Bring it in. That's right. Set the hook. There you go. What time will you be by? Well, I get off work about 6. That's I guess I can make it in about 10 minutes. Oh, that's fine. I'll be looking for you. Okay. Bye. Uh, Bye. Are we in love yet? Uh, okay. <laughs> Gee, it's 6.11 already. Where is he? Oh, quick, out the back way. She's got a closet full of dead shoe salesmen. Love me. Hello. Oh, here's your shoes. Oh, thanks. But uh, you're two minutes late. Yeah, I know. I had to put away some of the stock. Come on in. Uh, you know, it might not be important, but if someone dropped in accidentally and I had to introduce you... I was in my underwear and you were on the chapeze. Well I knew your name. Oh, James Wilson, but everybody calls me Jimmy. Okay, Jimmy. Everyone calls me Kitty. I don't know why. Yeah. My name is Susan. Hey, Kitty. Um, will you have some, or would you rather have a drink? Oh, no, thanks. Not for me. I've been hitting that stuff kind of heavy lately. Besides, my mother doesn't like the smell on my bread. You know how mothers are. Well, then how I about a bomb? I never had one myself, but enough to remember. <laughs> I was torn from the thigh of Zeus. That's okay. I got used to being on my own a long time ago. <laughs> you live here alone? No, with Vera Moore. She's in the show with me. Oh, are you an actress? Well, not an actress exactly. I, I work in a nightclub, the Paradise. Have you ever been there? No, but I'll come and see you some night. Oh, that's swell, Jimmy. I'll be looking for you. You know, it seemed kind of strange to me just living here like this with another friend. <laughs> yeah, I know. Not having anyone to come home to. Like a family. That's right. 
Yeah. Well, when I open the door, why, Mom is sure to call out, is that you, Jim? Liar. No matter what time of day or night it is. I get so I expect it. Double lie. Of course, I always tell her to go to bed when I'm going to be late, but she never does. Big fat lie. She worries about me, I guess. She can't rest until I get home. He's a gifted storyteller. <laughs> oh, she is. She's wonderful. Lie. She's the best mother a guy ever had. Double lie. Dad's pretty swell, too. He takes an interest in everything I do. <laughs> Why, when we talk, it's just like two fellas my age instead of father and son. Mom says she really has two bows. Well, it's That's getting really late, I think. I almost did. My folks split up about three years ago, and I've been on my own ever since. Well, you seem to have done pretty well on your own. Not nearly as well as me with my mother, of course. I wish I could believe that. But can I just tell you one more thing about my mom? Oh, I better pay you for the shoes before I talk you out of it. Oh, no, don't do that. I mean, I'd like to give them to you as a gift, if you'll let me, as a sort of a celebration. You see, you were my first customer. That's awfully sweet, but Weird. you can't afford to give me a gift like that, can you? Oh, sure I can. I've got plenty of money. I'm not just an ordinary shoe salesman. Liar! 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 If I like it and decide to stay, why, my dad... The clock is store. bugged! Oh, I see. 1,700 lies later. <laughs> and, of course, I was the last one out of Saigon. <laughs> That's my first baby picture. Isn't it awful? No, I think it's kind of cute. Uh, did I mention I'm an Olympic That's champion? Ten. Hey, you can tell you were going to be beautiful. What happened? And that Aunt Harriet. Enough said. She suffered from chronic indigestion. Yeah, I guess she was suffering from something. Take it back! Take it back! Oh, say it's late. I have to be at the Paradise in a half hour. Oh, I better go, then. And quick. Well, will I see you soon? I hope so, Jimmy. Whoa. This is one successful shoe salesman. Open mouth, close sale. Oh, pardon me. I thought you'd be gone. You're kind of late, aren't you? Can I just tell you oh, about my mom once? I was just ready to leave. Miss Vera Moore, Mr. Jimmy Wilson. How do you do? I'm doing fine. <laughs> so are you, I see. <laughs> well, so long, Kitty. Bye, Jimmy. Quack, 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 quack. Oh, yes, it's late as night, and the feeling's right. Oh, what a night. Hey, what is this? You'd better watch your step, hadn't you? Well, no problem with my new shoes. Blake? Yeah, Blake. In case you've forgotten, he's madly in love with you. Oh, Blake! Yeah, I know. But Jimmy seems so different. He, he's so sweet. He knows my shoe size. But kind of a kid every girl dreams about. You won an essay contest, now, don't you know. don't tell me it's love at first sight. Well, what's so impossible about that? Who knows what likes in the hearts of men the shadow knows. He lives at Monticello. Isn't everybody? I... Hey, I won the essay. Oh. Well, come on in. We invited the cast from Gigi over. <laughs> Sister. Hey, come back with that. Walt Disney interviewing another Snow White. <laughs> Gee, kind of slow night for a Monday. <laughs> you know the trouble with cocktail parties is they end too soon. They don't have to. You can make them last as long as you like. Well, I like this one to last at least three days. <laughs> so why don't we go down to, to Jack Taylor? Step. Down to the beach. You got lots of room, lots of liquor. We spend the weekend. That's a wonderful idea. Listen, everybody. How about going down to Jack Taylor's at the beach for the weekend? That's the Anybody know who Jack Taylor is? <laughs> hey, don't leave, because I'm here. Huh? Well, I won the essay contest. Oh, Jimmy, I didn't know you were home. Well, I guess you forgot. Tomorrow's my birthday. It was oh, your birthday last right, year. Uh, well, here. Here's $20. Go out and have a party with your own friends. Take out your best girl. Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you and Mom about. Oh, then there is a woman in the case. And what a woman. Take a look at this. Hey, gang, Jimmy's got a girl. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's strip him. Yeah, yeah, come on. Wait a minute. By my calculations, he's made $35. Minus the $9.95 for the shoes. Mom's swell. Birthday scam worked again. Huh. So that's why that guy on the bus is looking at me all funny. Oh, wise guy, eh? Happy birthday to me. Suppose I could buy a friend with this. Jack Taylor's got a great place. <laughs> Welcome back to the 12th Annual Essay Awards Ceremony. Ah, Miss Yorick. You desire a table? Uh, yes. This way, please. Uh, do you know when Miss Kitty Reed goes on? Right after this number. She is putting on her tassels now. 
Hi, I'm the SA guy. Hi, SA guy's here. That's me. SA is my name. <laughs> Monsieur, I must warn you. The act is messy. You will get wet on this ride. Uh, well, or bring me two champagne cocktails. Two? Yes, two. Yeah, yeah and, and put them in one of those big slurpy glasses, too. Charge! Charge! Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you our singing star, Miss Kitty Reed. This is her over here. Isn't she beautiful? Take a look. What do you think? Do it. <laughs> Gina Davis. Define happy. In your work. No, don't sing this to me on a Monday. Never, mm. ever sure. Mm. Does your morning menu really send you on your way? I love the skillet scramble and fries. Do you greet each day. And is it a deal, a real appeal? Feel you're earning your pay. I came to tell you you have to pay for the shoes. Are you grateful? Mm. You're alive. Is your day full? Hey, Walter Lance. Oh, what are you doing? In the rhythm that I'm speaking of. Can I order, please? You if you're in love. I know how toast works. <laughs> are you happy in your work? Well, I was. Though your banker or a clerk. <laughs> Where's this going? You know, the table? As delicious as hey, showbiz, can we get our food over here? Do your hours spin? <laughs> and are you a blow to check chapeau? No, you're making your tea. Bite me. And you carry crumbs away. Uh, no. <laughs> are you merry with your tray? It's difficult. Living in the uh, river it's going now. <laughs> Hey, I got a great idea. You go get Gypsy, I'll get the costumes. It just might work. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you our singing star, Miss Kitty Reed. Spilled some champagne cocktail into Cambot sequencer here. Uh, sorry, everybody. Sorry. Uh, Tom Server, you know what to do. Get down there and muck that out. I'm Roger. sorry, Chips. It was going so good. Well, I guess we'll have to take it from the top. Oh, no, uh, not again. Uh, I think we got movies on the yeah. show. Oh, pretty well, Ooh. actually. Oh, yeah. Thanks. And now Tom McCann and the Payless Orchestra with Cole Hahn and the saxophone and the naturalizer will sing something by Johnston and Murphy. I synthesized animal protein in my lab today. You know, I'm 
I'm glad you came over at that. Are you really? No. <laughs> now, if we're going to be friends, it'll give us a chance to be better acquainted. Oh, I feel as though I've known you for years already. Oh, you do? Well, suppose you start telling me something about myself. All right. Oh, you're hot. Let's see, when you were 10 years old... Oh, now, wait a minute. That's going to be a long story. Suppose we sit the rest of this one out. Okay. Right? I took the liberty of sitting here. I hope you don't mind. Not at all. Who are you? Oh, this is Jimmy Wilson, a boy from my hometown. I met him today by accident. This is Mr. Blake, Jimmy, my boss. How do you do? I'm glad to know any friend of Kitty's. You going to be in town long, Mr. Wilson? I live here. In oh, castle and stuff. I guess you see quite a change in Kitty since the last time you saw her, huh? Oh, not so very much. Of course, her clothes are different. Yes, I'm sure they are. You see, she spends a lot more nowadays than... She did back in Iowa. Ooh, that's cold. Yes, Ouch. Okay, Charlie. Uh, you'll excuse us, of course, Mr. Oh, Wilson. Sure, go right ahead. Thank you. I'm waiting for a call from the president, so I couldn't dance anyway. So who's the stiff? Where'd you run into the little Lord Fauntleroy? In a shoe store. I went in to buy some shoes, and there he was. Isn't that a funny coincidence? Yeah. Selling shoes, huh? Mm -hmm. Hi, I sell shoes. Seems like a nice kid. I might be able to help him do better. Look, Charlie, lay off. I'm only trying to help him. I know other people you've helped, and they all Shut end up. up. I can use a kid. Just whose welfare are you interested in? Here's a mine. Yours, of course. OK, see that it stays that way. I want you to give me a build-up with a kid. Tell him what a great guy I am. What a good friend I've been to you. I might find him useful. And then I'll throw him away like a paper okay. towel. In our audience tonight, Tony Big Tuna Cardo. Stand up, Tony. I went and liberated France while you were dancing. Uh, I fixed your chair, too. It doesn't squeak anymore. Oh, I ordered for all of us. I hope it's all right. But you see, tomorrow's my birthday, and I'm celebrating. OK, it's enough with the birthday. It's all right. As a matter of fact, we'll make a night of it. What do you say, kitten? Meow. Yeah. Fine, I'm Forrest. Well, hey, uh, Jimmy, happy birthday to you. Happy Thank birthday, you. Jimmy. So then my mom says to Roosevelt and Churchill, she says, what about some kind of Lend-Lease program? So... Suddenly they're at a hee-haw rap party. Oh, they'd better not sing Achy Breaky Heart yeah. again. Jewels and Jim. Well, we're going to the buffet. Are you... Groove in with your cuckoo work. Hey. Everything satisfactory, Mr. Blake? Oh, fine, thanks, Ben. Say, you haven't forgotten about that package you left with me. Oh, no, uh, no. Uh, I'll have it picked up in a couple of days. Okay. And Trent. I love you. This party's on the kid. Thanks. Say, what are you doing tomorrow? Or today, I guess. It must be Sunday morning already. It is. Why? What's on your mind? Well, I thought with my folks away that we could spend my birthday together. Why not? I'll tell you, Jimmy. You come to my apartment about 12, and I'll fix you an old-fashioned birthday breakfast. You know, coffee and cigarettes. Oh, swell. You know, tonight's been great, only it'd be nicer if Mr. Blake hadn't come along. You'd ask him, he'd say the same about you. Yeah. Don't you like Mr. Blake? Oh, I guess he's all right. Only... Oh, isn't he all right? Yeah, I guess. Well, don't you like him? He's my main squeeze, sure, Jimmy. I, I wouldn't want you to be like him. Why? What's wrong with you? Oh, he's money mad, wants to get rich quick. Hey, is that bad? Sometimes. I think you have a better future in the shoe business. How about essay writing? I'm good at that. Thank you. Well, Kitty, Trent's been asking if you'd sing a song. Well, I'd be glad to, Mr. Trent. Thanks, Miss Reed. It'll be a treat for my patrons. Excuse me. How about Love to Love Your Baby? So, Jimmy, do you like your kneecaps? Ladies and gentlemen, I have a big surprise for you this evening. I'm Rudolph Hess. From the paradise, Miss Kitty Reed. Hey, we want Grandpa Jones. You too old to cut the mustard. You know anything by Donna Summer? Yeah, that's good, isn't you? Oh, she sure is. I've never met anyone like her before. Take it back, take it back. Quite an expensive oh. girl to take out. Oh, nothing's too good for a girl like her. Honey, don't slouch. Up straight. High low power horn. <laughs> ding, ding. Order up, come on, pick it up. We were going this way, that way, this 
spray. Then you took us by the hand. Wait a second. She's got a pig in a blanket on her head. Showed us the kiss way to the promised land. The kiss way to the promised land? Taking a spray. Yes, Satan, speak to me through this song. We should get in. Cause I'm hand dipped in gin. The grass is the greenest. She's looking at me. Oh, she's looking at me. Am too. I'm not. Uh-huh. All skate now. All skates. Kowalski table for seven. Kowalski. Check, please. Check. Hey, I'm a Waiter. mozzarella stick's Check. almost up. Check, please, please. To the promised land. Last call. Last call for alcohol. <laughs> I like songs. <laughs> I love sure intended. We should get in the swing. All, all cheese busters are now $1.45. There is also a green and white station wagon parked in the delivery zone. <laughs> Wear pants. <laughs> to hell. Boy, she's really rocking this mother, isn't she? Ouch. Thank you. Oh, the mob's gone country. Thank you, Miss Reed. Thank you, Miss Reed. Gee, you were swell, Kitty. Thanks, Jimmy. So as I was saying, Jimmy, if you'd like to add to your income sometime, I might be able to throw a few odd jobs your way. What kind of odd job? Oh, little things you could do for me after working hours. Sod farming. Here's my card if you're interested. Look me up sometime. Well, thanks, I will. Mobs are us. We got places to go. Waiter, check. Checkmate. Oh, let me have that. You took care of it at the Paradise. Okay. I'll just take a... Jeez, who ate all this stuff? And a cover. Do you remember a fourth person sitting here? Gee, I'm afraid I don't have quite enough cash to cover this. Well, they'll take your check. Oh, will they? Well, have you got a blank check? Sure. How you fix for socks and underwear? Her cigarette is Velcro to her lip. See, so you use the same bank I do. Oh, well, they're your checks. Yeah. Yeah, ever get bit by a dead bee? Oh, I don't have any other tables. That's okay. Uh, is everything current, Mr. Disraeli? Or buy yourself a rototiller. Well, let's get going. <clears throat> Come on. Yes, sir? I want you to go to the bank for me and make a deposit. Yes, sir. And, uh, Jimmy. Uh, I love you. You might put these through. Maybe they'll be good now. If they bounce back again, I'm going to put that Mr. Smith in jail. Gee, that's quite a coincidence, because I just wrote a bad check, and if I had some extra cash, I... Oh. One plus one is two. Two plus one is two. Do I know where I'm going to? I'm stupid. Yes, indeed, I'm stupid. <laughs> yeah, quite a long line at the petty larceny window. Yeah, one, uh, two. Uh oh, I think he's going to give Mr. Potter his newspaper. Right. My mom doesn't drink. Take the other window. Oh, well, thanks. What's the secret word? Say the secret word and win a hundred dollars. I'd like to deposit some guilt and withdraw some denial, please. I'm sorry. You can deposit this. Oh. Mm. I'm sorry. You can't put that in your pocket either. Nice cuticle. Mm-hmm. Sit down. Bet you dropped in. You've been thinking over my suggestion? Yes, in a way I have. 
You see, and you could use a little cash, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. There's a friend of mine in trouble, and I'd like to help him out. Well, how much do you want? About $100. Or 7280 well, That's a lot of money, Jimmy. Get out, get out! But I guess I can advance it to you. When you begin to work for me, why, you can pay me back. That'd be swell if you would, Mr. Blake. I could start working for you any time you say. Good, you can begin right now. Hmm. First thing I want you to do is to go to the bank and rent a safe deposit box. At times, there may be some valuable papers I want you to take care of for me. All right, I'll do that. Do what? Now, don't be surprised oh. if this job gets you up at odd hours of the night. I'll make it worth your while. Well, maybe I ought to quit the shoe store. No, there's no need to do that. Hmm. You stay at the store until I get you on a full-time job. If you say so. <laughs> now, tonight, I want you to go to this address and pick up a package. And whack somebody. You just show him this, and he'll know it's OK. Well, should I bring the package back? No. No, uh, no, no. Deposit box. And I'll let you know when I want it. All right. Jimmy, this will take care of the rental of the box, and you can keep the rest of it. Thanks. By the way, I'd rather you wouldn't say anything to anyone about working for me. You know, if your boss found out, he might not like it. I won't. And when you get through work tomorrow, give me a ring. Yes, sir. Oh, and I'll leave your soul with the receptionist. I knew I'd go from rags to riches. Nope, sorry, honey. I'm eating all four of my lobsters. Okay, here you go, Jimmy. Make sure nobody sees this pound of bacon, see? I'm taking you downtown, honey. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, uh, where should I put my hand? It, it's kind of awkward. Senator Paul Simon. Hey, you two staying home tonight? Oh, well, your father's going to the club to play cards later. I thought you and I might do something, but I see you have other plans. Oh, I'm sorry. He's dead. A rather heavy day. Why don't you call up one of your gang? Maybe I will. Well, bye now. Bye. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> You think he'd ever accuse us? have changed these last few weeks. Have you noticed it, Dan? Jimmy Ho. Oh, yeah, he seems to have grown up overnight. <laughs> well, I don't like it. What do you suppose he's doing out every night in the week? For several nights, he didn't come home at all. Maybe he stayed with a friend. It's a little late to start asking questions now. Well, after all, you're his father. You ought to keep an eye on him. Well, you're his mother. You say all once in a while, you might know what he's up to. The talking corpse. Maybe he's got a girlfriend, that's all. I have when I was his age. And then I died I'm inside. I'm not going to start taking after you. <laughs> That's it. There's a six-pack calling my name. <laughs> oh, Kitty. <laughs> I, uh, I brought you a little something. <laughs> oh, Jimmy. Leftover Chinese. Why, sure, I like buying presents for you. It's fun. But I always have to pay for them. Jimmy. I don't want you to be offended, but I've got to ask you something. Do I have a weird profile? You're not mixed up in anything that isn't quite on the level, are you? Whatever gave you that idea? I'm just selling drugs to oh, school I don't kids. Know, except that you have so much more money to spend lately. Oh, the mob Look, ties. Don't you worry about me. I wouldn't do anything that wasn't on the right side of the law. I hope not, Jimmy. You're so sweet, I wouldn't want you to change. Why should I change? I'll always wear Jed Clampett's hat. People do in this town. Circle Pines will do That's that. For you don't, Kitty. Now let me have that tongue of yours. Say, Eddie Manners gave me two tickets for the Follies, Sunday. Hey, what do we bid for two tickets for the Follies? Hey, seven and a half from that. You cancel that like you did our luncheon date today. Oh, now, little kitten, can I help it if I'm busy? Oh, hanged if I can find time to do the things we've planned. But business is sure picking up. Well, that's good. You bet for both of us. The higher Charlie Blake goes. The higher Kitty Reed. You said it. Well, bye, darling. Oh, uh, I meant to ask you before. Have you put Jimmy Wilson to work? Why, uh, I haven't laid eyes on him. Have you seen him? Liar! Liar! You asked me to give you a build-up, remember? Must have been a swell build-up you gave him to keep him away like this. Man, everybody well, lies the way he in this talked, movie. I thought by now he'd be pounding on your door for a job. No, I haven't seen him. I guess he's pounding on the wrong door. <laughs> you said it. Hey, you talk about me giving you a stand-up. Where have you been disappearing to after the show every night? You sure get out of that dressing room in a hurry. And I've been missing you. Well, Charlie, you know the old saying. Early to bed and early to rise. Hmm? Well, that's me. Bye now. Goodbye. I also know about a bird in the hand. Now get out of here. Nearly to bed, nearly to bed. You're deal with Mr. Blake. How long have you been with him? A few weeks. I'm not working full time for him yet. Uh, see. I'll be with you in a minute. Uh, note to self, find out correct time. Uh, is my birthday tomorrow, mister? What is this guy, butcher to the mob? <laughs> Here you go. Happy birthday, now, Jimmy. This is very important. See that Mr. Blake gets this note tonight. And be sure that you give it to no one but him. All right, I'll do that. And this is Skag. Be careful with it. I'll let you out the back door. Don't tell the Nazis where I am. Hi. 
Hi, I have an important thing and some stuff called Skag. What's the idea coming back here? I told you what to do with that package. I know you did, Mr. Blake, but Mr. Carlton said to give you this note. He said it was important. Is this a caper? I never should have gone to an old country buffet with him. Let's see, what does it say here? Isn't this guy carrying the letter a dink? Huh. It's all right, Jimmy. You did the right thing. Better wait out in the other office. I may have something else for you to do. Okay, Mr. Blake. And uh, do some filing while you're out there. <laughs> yeah, I got a real knack for shadowy errands. <laughs> That's me. All right, boys, come on in. We're gonna pants the courier. William Frawley, Montgomery Cliff. Get this. Chuck, I tried to get the painting out of Gordon's dead storage. Couldn't make it as the place is being watched. Don't send any more packages. I'm leaving town. Take my tip and do the same. Call. How do you like that? I called you Chuck. I thought that stuff was safe there. $30,000 worth of diamonds. What are you going to do now, Charlie? We're going to talk like this, see? Go down to the warehouse and get it out tonight and take the kid with you. Take the kid? What for? May take two of you to do the job. I'll have him rent a car and he can drive for you. I'm doing the Superman set now. Oh, Jimmy. Oh, hi. I want you to go down to Olson's before mm -hmm. it closes and rent a car. Huh. Come back here at 12 o'clock tonight and pick up the boys and take them down to Gordon's warehouse okay. to pick up a package. Then drive them back here. <laughs> okay, Mr. Blake. He's got framed rubber vomit on the wall. <laughs> You know what? I should call Mr. Blake and tell him how much I like him. Hello, Kitty. This is Jimmy. Remember me? I'm your boyfriend. You'd better be. Can I see you tonight? We'll go dance. Oh, Crazy this is can, late Jimmy. night hot. Oh, swell. I've got a little business to take care of, and I'll be about a half hour late. I've got something awfully important to ask you. Now, don't tell me you're going to propose to me. Maybe. All right, hon. I'll be looking for you. Jimmy's cheating on me. That guy's eavesdropping on his eavesdropping. Wait here, I'll be back in an hour. With squeaky shoes on. Love came between us. Oh, hello. I didn't expect to see you, Charlie. I know you didn't. You expected the kid. Nobody expects to Nobody see you, Chop. Love came between us. Oh, oh butter mints, huh? Don't mind if I do. Mm. First of all, you and I are going to straighten out something. What's going on between you two? Oh, cheap love, why? I don't know what you're talking about, Charlie. Why don't you dress like Major Barbara? No? Well, then I'll make it clear. I heard that phone conversation you had a little while ago. He was talking from my office. It was funny, it made me laugh. Ha! So you really fell in love with the kid. Mm. Now look, nobody's going to take you away from me. Nobody. Not even me, see? I'll kill me before that happens. Why? Why, Charlie, you don't really think I fell for that kid, do you? Why, you asked me to string him along. Can I help it if he fell for me? Well, he did win that essay don't contest. Worry about it, you? He's as good as forgotten. Liar! Liar! When he gets here, I want you to get rid of him. The old way. Oh, the highway. Or would you rather have me do it? Okay, Charlie. I'll be happy in my work. It ought to be a cinch. Oh, it's the three hard-boiled eggs she ordered. I'll be in there listening. Like I usually am. Watch out, Gaff! <laughs> hey, I thought you were going to have this stuff dry cleaned. Well, our time is popular. Well, I've joined the Black Hand. Come on, Hi. Let's get going. We've only got a few hours. I have some work to do later on. I'm not going. Well, what the? Wait a minute. Hey, are you kidding? Why, over the phone, you just got through saying we'd go someplace. I lied. I know, but after I talked to you, I changed my mind. The guy in the closet. An old friend of mine called, and I'm going out with him. The guy in the closet. Hey, you say that so convincingly, I almost believe it. Hey, where'd you get these golf clubs? Shh. You can believe it. The guy in the closet. In the Do you closet. mean that? Of course I mean it. Hey, I smell Shut Italian. Up. Oh, you poor chump. Courage. Did you really take me seriously? Did you think for one minute that I loved you or that I wanted to marry you? She's smoking. Why, can you imagine Kitty Reed cooped up in a little two before cottage with a string of kids climbing all over? Oh, no, not Kitty. I am the angel of death. The day of reckoning is You know, us. Jimmy, I thought that for a while you might go someplace. But you'll always be a shoe salesman at 25 a week. 18 after taxes. And uh, my ambition's a little higher than that. Well, wait a minute. They're going to put me in charge of well, the sock table. Why don't you table? run along and peddle your papers? 
You annoy me. Uh, okay. Good night, Mr. Blake. Good night, Jimmy. Good night. <laughs> I ought to get that tennis racket restrung. Honey, I'm home. <laughs> I love that. Are you satisfied, Charlie? Well, you saved me a lot of trouble, kitten. Meow. I'll see you in the morning. Yeah, thanks for coming by. <laughs> if I had parents, I'd accuse them right now. I accuse her hair. Meanwhile, outside of Skokie, Elliot Ness and his men continue their vigil. Well, at least I got a caper to fall back on. Huh? What now? How can I get a blowout when I'm just sitting here? Get going, kid, quick. What happened? Get going. I stole the Bogart. It's a Bogart. Wait, shouldn't we find out what those shots were if anyone was hurt? I knew that nervous trigger finger of yours would get us into trouble sooner or later. It's all American. Well, it was either him or us. What about the kid? He ought to be here any minute, and he's ready to scream. And you better do some fancy talking, Blake. We're going to have trouble with him. Just let me handle him. Why didn't you tell me I was driving a car while hold up? Oh, I didn't boy. see any reason to tell you, Jimmy. I never told you about any of the other jobs you did for me. What other jobs? Hey. What do you mean? Ring jobs? You don't think I've been paying you the kind of money I have just to pick up packages? If they'd been on a level, I could have gotten a messenger for a lot less than you've been getting. I didn't know there was anything crooked about the job. I don't want any part of it. I'm quitting right now. No, Give me not. that tie back. Nobody ever quits on Charlie Blake. Oh, he's really in trouble. He doesn't want him to. Whatever I've done, I'm not going to stand for murder. I'll tell the police. I'll tell them about you. I'll tell them what you did to me. I'll tell hey, it's, it's my birthday tomorrow. You tell them anything. You're in this whether you like it or not. Mm. Just as much as if you handled a gun. You tell the police and you'll get 20 years. Free? With no obligation? Talk. What if I tell a notary public? Huh. It's better. Sense of getting panicky? I'll tell you what you do. You go on home and get a good night's rest. And forget about it. Tomorrow morning, go back to the stores if nothing had happened. And don't worry about getting into a jam. I have enough influence to pull you out. Okay, I guess it's all right, God. You, uh, want some yogurt? No, oh, it's all because of these shoes. The family circus is really upsetting to him, though. I've got to control my urges. Hot Bunny Program. It's the Feather McGee and Molly Show. <laughs> Stop mocking me, radio. <laughs> Not down up in that door, McGee. I hate that hell roach music. You figure that vase is filled with scotch? Mm. What, Hello? Jimmy? Hello, this is Jimmy Wilson. Is Kitty there? I gotta talk to her. Just a minute, and I'll see if she's here. It's Jimmy Wilson. He wants to talk to you. The young Vivian Vance looks hopeful. She leans back. Tell him I'm not here. She says she's not oh, here. I'm sorry, Jimmy, but she's not here. Thanks. I wonder who that was in the back. Wait a minute. Hey. Mm. The glow of the essay contest is starting to wear off. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are watching a film called I Accuse My Parents. Now just to ground everybody, it's the one where the kid accuses his parents. But can parents and parents alone explain mental illness on the scale of young Jimmy's? Mm -hmm. Gee, that'd be nice, but hey, let's try to map out the trail of his psychosis. Mm -hmm. We'll give Jimmy the benefit of the doubt and start with the film's hypotenuse that at the center of Jimmy's madness, we will in fact find his drunk folks. Right, uh, drunk folks concerning whom Jimmy lies. And that's fine, but these are not simple utilitarian lies that satisfy you and me as we interact on a daily basis. No, 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 no. These are elaborate lies, Joel, if you will. Elaborate. Mm -hmm. Through which Jimmy constructs a richly cuckoo fantasy world of love. Then, Jimmy meets a nice young woman. Ah. Hey, Jim, here's someone you might want to confide in. Uh -huh. Truth, Jim. Truth. 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 Mm -hmm. oh. No. Not no. A chance. It's not going to happen. Instead, Jimmy feels the need to 
denigrate others while simultaneously attracting others. Which leads somehow to a life of crime, and yet he's ignorant that it is crime. Huh. Related back to the elaborate lies, perhaps, Jim? And where in God's name is the connection to our starting point? Drunk, Drunk folks. folks. Uh -huh. right. and we, we shouldn't forget that Jimmy may be kind of stupid, Joel. Mm -hmm. Oh, Cambot, if you will. Here we go. Now we've entered Jimmy's subconscious. Wow. Yeah. As it spins and twirls to illustrate today's lesson, that true Jimmy scale dementia is indeed a complex phenomenon. <laughs> Cause and effect, good luck. Here's uh, <laughs> drunk folks, but that's just a piece of the puzzle. Mm. Hey, they're stupid, really big. Mm, yeah. And yet there's so much more. Oh, no backbone. Oh, and an extra unexplained level of denial. This oh. strange need for mob ties. Yeah, mm. Jimmy's complicated haircut. Oh, there goes his failure in Weeblos. Oh, and original sin, don't forget that. Oh, oh, no. So if you're off your dot yourself. Don't look for simple answers. Mm. Really get inside yourself and just run around and have a good time. Believe you us, it can be a whale of a lot of fun. And you know what? We got commercial signs. Jim's crazy. And stupid. He's crazy for accusing his parents. Hmm. Good morning. 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 Mr. Holden? Yes. Morning. Anything I can do for you? Yes. Have you a boy working here by the name of Jimmy Wilson? Morning. Yes. We'd like to see him. I'm sorry, he hasn't come in yet. Most unusual. Jimmy's always on time. Milk duds? We got orders to check up on him. To check up on Jimmy? Yeah. What's he been doing? That's mm -hmm. what we're going to find out. He's been seen with some pretty shady characters. Yeah. Mm. Let's have his address. Why, of course. Let's see, Tuesday good for you? No. Uh, how about Sunday? Hmm. 465 Lindhurst Drive. Thanks, Mr. Holden. Sunday it is, then. I'm afraid your boy won't show up today. Hmm. Well, who's going to sell these shoes, then? Hey, uh, you fellas want to reach into the treasure barrel? Oh. Hmm? <gasps> there he is! Officer! Officer! Well, here's our little fugitive. I'm sorry I'm late, Mr. Holden, but I had some business. There's two men here asking about you from police headquarters. Police headquarters? Well, what do they want to know about me? They didn't say. Have they got anything against you, Jimmy? Well, no, of course not. What could they have against me? Well, I don't know what you do outside the shop. They said you've been seen with some pretty shady characters. Hmm. Maybe you better go home and get your folks take you down to police headquarters. Huh. Get this thing straightened out. I don't like police coming here, Jimmy. It isn't good for business. What business? Well, I don't blame you, Mr. Holden. No, I'll go right home and do that. Oh, all right. I'm sure there must be some mistake. Yeah. Two plain clothesmen from police headquarters have been to the shoe store asking about me. Well, that's pretty quick work. They must have traced the car. Now, look, you got me into this. You got to get me out. You said you would. Take it easy. I said I would, and I will. Come on, 30. Got a bit of now. Give me 35. Give me 35. And lay low for the rest of the day. At 11 o'clock tonight, meet the boys at 6 and Kent Street. And then what? They'll have some money for you, and they'll slip you out of town. Then what? After a few weeks, when it blows over, you can come back. Then what? Okay, I'll be there. As long as I talk really fast and do what he says, I'm going to be okay. Life on the lamb. An affordable vacation. He's taken to selling his essays cheap on the street. Mm. Here now, what are you doing in a cocktail film, boy? Go home to your mother, that's a good lad. Oh, that was a close one. Oof. We're supposed to deprogram you. Hmm. Have you got the stuff? It's all in here. Let's get back in here so nobody can see it. Well, that seems reasonable. Walk back with a couple of nice fellas, and then all of a sudden you... Whoa! This is a message from the other kids in the essay contest, Jimmy. So I told her that I like Playtex. What? Huh? Jimmy's really fitting in with the other gangsters his age. Hey, wait a minute. Somebody's coming. Let's get out of here. Mobsters are easily scared. <laughs> wait, I forgot to give you the stuff here. What's the matter, kid? What happened to you? I don't know. You'd better come along with us. We'll report it to the police. No, no, fellas. Just... Just help me find a cab, will you? I, I want to go home. Okay, kid, just as you say. Alfred on the spot. Mom? Dad? I won the Get the Crap Kicked Out of You contest. Dad? I'm up here, honey, with the DTs. Could you get the yellow lizard out of the bathroom? Uh, where's the Dexedrine? Where's that Dexedrine? If knickknacks ruled the world. <laughs> Meanwhile, at Black Panther headquarters. I'll see you. What do you got? Yes. Hello. Yes, sir. 
Mr. Wilson in. Tell him his son wants him. Just a minute, I'll see. Ollie, telephone. Oh, I've never had such uh, 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 Murray, fun. use Why, a coaster. Me every hand. Your boy's on the phone, Mr. Wilson. He wants to talk to you. Tell him I'm not here. But you are... All right, Riley, oh, come on, Bill. Yes, he says he's not here. I'm sorry, you sir, but know. your father isn't here. Well, if he comes in, tell him I call, will you? I wonder who that was in the background. Oh, well. Mom! <laughs> I'm just gonna run away. <laughs> I got peanut butter and underwear, and that's all I need. <laughs> I'm gonna run away to Kansas and become a ventriloquist. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Where's my trial size perch shampoo? Jimmy is suddenly seized with an essay idea. So, that's what happened to all his other moms. Problem with mob, on lamb, accusingly yours, Jimmy. P.S. Hope you had fun at Jack Taylor's. Would you comb your hair? Annoying. I'll just put this over here with Mom's suicide note. No, oh, they'll think it's a cocktail napkin. I saw some kick-ass parties here. <laughs> More powerful than a locomotive. Auntie M, Auntie M! What is he thinking about trains? Uh, uh, yeah. These trains never stop for you. Ah, uh, but he's able to pick up a ride with the Jode family. This is the life. Ha <laughs> ha! Maybe I'll travel somewhere. Hey, cafe, I've heard of this place. I don't know if I'll find any Thai food in this old town. Hey, maybe you'll see me looking dejected and invite me in. On top of it all, my area's gone. Boy, that was good stuff. I gotta learn to order only one chicken. Oh, and that whipped cream, hmm. One million, two million, three million, four million, fourteen billion, fifteen billion. I decided I'm gonna do something really stupid. Um, okay, uh, can, can I can I rob you? Cup of coffee. You bet. And put the French silk pie in an unmarked bag. Expecting somebody? No. I didn't know it was drugs. Uh, do you have any bullets? How about a hamburger? It's what's for dinner. No, thanks. I'm not hungry. If you're broke, it's on the house. Hey, it's Officer oh, Tootie. Oh. Plenty of onions, eh? French fries and all the trimmings. I'll trust you. You can pay me any time you want. Ooh, ooh. Okay. Thanks. Someone tell you it was my birthday? I like my hat. I made it. Give and take, that's my system. Yep. Share what you've got, and you'll never want. I've had a lot of guys come in here broke. Never sent them away hungry. Got them piled out back. Now don't lose by it either. They always come back and pay. Most people are okay. Except for you, of course. Yeah, stab this into your thigh. You're not gonna hug me, are you? Better give me that gun, son. You can't eat with one hand. Uh, actually, you can, but I'll give you the gun anyway. Wait a minute, this is an episode of Insight. Yep. I saw it on your face when you first came in here. I can read your chakras, I've too. Been around, seen all sorts in my time. But they don't see me. You learn things about people in this business. For instance, they're bipeds. Mm, loaded, too. Ooh. That's dangerous. Look, can I, I have my hamburger? You know, some guys get sore when you pull a gun on them. And they don't stop to think. Why, you might have even killed me. Not meaning it either. Mm. Such things happen. 
I know. Better put this away before somebody comes in and sees it. Would you give me my hamburger? Okay, I'll keep it for you. You can have it anytime you want. At Alice's restaurant. Want a job? Sure, I want a job. You ever worked as a boy a before? Week, your food and lodgings. I got a shack here in back of the restaurant. Can't much. In fact, it sucks. Comfortable enough. Radio, some flowers in the garden, and a dog. And me. What do you say? Give me my gun back. You're taking an awful chance, aren't you? I mean, offering me a job this way without knowing anything about me? You see, before I... I've got to tell you, though, there's one condition attached to it. You'll have to go to church with me every Sunday morning. Church? That's right. Forget it! Every week, I work for myself. On the 7th, I work for the church. Hmm. I'm an usher. And it wouldn't look right you living in my house and not going to church. Of course, that's only an hour on Sunday mornings. In the afternoons, on fine days, we could go fishing oh, or... Gee, that sounds swell. Oh, hey, and no mob ties. You're learning fast. <laughs> I've entered the twilight zone. Ah, oh, you like my swing in church, son? I've got a goofy hat on my head. Oh, how I need Michelle Pfeiffer in The Fabulous Baker Boys. <laughs> He's in Kansas flipping burgers. It's an air filter piano. Hmm. Oh, she's a regular Coco Taylor. Cha cha. Oh, you're regular. And now she's got a table centerpiece on her head. Well, let's see. I've ordered the death of 10, no 12 people today. Pretty good day. Why did you leave? You me? told him to. Didn't you know I'd be forlorn? Red green. Now I hope and pray Biggie? that maybe someday I can say that I'm sorry. Please hear my plea. Not guilty. Where can you be? The audience is frankly stunned. Where can you be? Where can you be? Last call, ladies and gentlemen, last call. He was well tonight, kitten. Well, thanks. Still thinking about Jimmy, huh? What makes you think that? Maybe the way you sang that song? Oh, now look, kitten, I know you've been searching for that kid for two months. Why don't you give it up? He's probably a thousand miles from you. I'll tell you what we'll do. When you get through tonight, we'll go out and paint the town. You need some recreation. I'll kill somebody for you. Who do you want killed? Okay, Charlie. Oh, what a caboose. Hoo-ha! Son, it's been two months and you haven't touched your hamburger. Sir, I just don't understand the Holy Spirit. Is it a bird? What's the matter? Not hungry? How Not come hungry? I'm the only customer? Something's bothering you. What is it? Uh, I'm sick? No. I found a toenail in my hamburger. I you liked it here pretty well. Seem to be settling down. Well, I do like it, Al. It's not that. In fact, it's the only time I've ever really been happy. But I want a salad. Is that asking too much? Fill it, son. You can tell me. Well, it's just that I've been thinking things over, that's all. And I want new curtains. You want to go back and straighten yourself out? Square accounts? Take the load off your mind? Yeah, I guess that's it. Bring your trousers in for dry I cleaning? I to find yep. the courage to do it. Change that old underwear? Would you help me, Al? And don't mention God. I've been waiting to hear you say that, son. So I prepared sure, a song. Yeah. We'll go back and face it together. After they hear your story, I'm positive they'll give you a break. <laughs> Don't worry. Ah, oh, gee, that's well. I feel better already. Now tuck into that beef. <laughs> you see, Miss Reed, I couldn't let Jimmy give himself up unless he'd seen you first. Okay. And I want Let's to go. see you too, Jimmy. To explain and tell you the truth. I never wore the shoes. I was in the other room that night listening. I had to say what I did or he'd have killed you. Huh. They tried to the night they beat you up. And then the things you said weren't true. Of course they weren't true. Yeah, except for about your lousy shoe career. Oh, Jimmy, Blake's the cause of all your trouble and mine, too. If he finds out you're here, he'll kill us both. No, he won't, because he's going to the police station with me. You and Al can call the cops and follow. Jimmy, wait! Jimmy! Quack, 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 quack. Again, proving just how stupid he is. So, how about a little sugar for Happy Chef over here? Organized crime, please hold. Organized crime, please hold, sir. Let me guess, it's your birthday. 
Hello, Jimmy. How's your hat? What brings you to see me? Not in trouble again, are you? No, but you are. I'm giving myself up to the police, and you're going with me. You're taking it a lot for granted, aren't you? Maybe I am. But you're going to tell everything that's happened between us. And if I don't... You'll kill me? The police are on their way here to see that you do. Now, let's see. Did I call them? Right. Okay, right. Jimmy. But I'll go with you. Time I went on the straight and narrow. I keep... Uh, that's a weird position. Ooh. I don't really go into town in there. Hey, does anyone have an appointment? Oh, his heart just exploded. Well, so much for the whole he's coming with me scenario. Yeah. Yeah, I accuse my parents. I tried to take the gun away from him, mm -hmm. but it went off. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, I know I've lied, I've cheated. I've done a lot of things that I shouldn't have done. And more. But maybe I wouldn't have started lying to my schoolmates if I hadn't been ashamed of my, my home life. If I hadn't been ashamed that my parents were, were denying me this the understanding that a boy is entitled to. The love and protection that a boy needs. The guidance that sets him straight. Maybe they should have sworn him in. And that's why I, I accuse my parents. Ah. Is your hat flask empty yet? The court reporter is dreamy. Seeing as it's your birthday, we'll let you go. James Wilson. You dummy. Your story is supported by much of the evidence in this case, and I think indicates clearly that you are not guilty of the killing of Charles Blake. Thanks. Well, bye. And on that count, I find you not guilty. Oh, oh, oh not guilty. Oh. And on the remaining counts of having aided and abetted in the transportation and concealment of stolen property, uh -oh. I find you guilty and sentence you to five years in state prison. Hey, my dad went there. That sentence is hereby suspended, and you are placed on probation for two years. Thank God I'm white. You are white. in the custody of your parents until you are 21, during which time I hope that you will justify the confidence I am placing in you. Ah. I will, Your Honor. Oh, let's go to Jack Taylor's and celebrate. <laughs> wait, wait, he has to talk to Doug Llewellyn first. Accused us. Why don't you just do it on the bench? As for you, Mr. and Mrs. Wilson, you are not on trial here. But you have seen the tragedy brought about by the neglect your boy suffered. You will roast and in you hell. You are not the only parents guilty of such neglect. Oh. I speak to Message parents coming everywhere. in. I say that there it in is. In pursuit of your own pleasures and occupations, you neglect your children. Realize now before it is too late. By bonds. This might have been your boy. Not that your boy would be quite so thick headed as Jimmy. I accuse my parents, brought to you by Boone's Farm. The makers of this film also accuse Hitler and Tojo and Mussolini. We accuse them all. Soon we'll accuse Stalin. Seriously, Joel, who would you accuse? Oh, I don't really. Okay, as we move into the home stretch, I thought it'd be nice to read a letter. So, uh, hi, Tom. Hi, Crow. Just getting ready to read a letter. Oh no, thank you. That's okay. All we'd like is just a cup of coffee. Hamburgers. <coughs> <coughs> well, just get going on this letter then. Hamburgers. <coughs> uh, no, no, thanks. We're not hungry. Hamburgers. <coughs> oh, I get it. It's like in the movie. How would you boys like a hamburger? Like that? Finally! What took you so long? What a maroon. <laughs> now? Now what? <sighs> no, 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 you stupid, stupid man! Now you present us with a big, beefy, charbroiled hamburger sandwich and a french fried potatoes garnish like in the movie! Yes. Jeez! Yeah. Uh, all I got is this postcard. Oh! Crow, you talk to him. <sighs> you were supposed to get us a charbroiled hamburger sandwich like in the movie. Uh, uh, what is happening to this family? <laughs> Come on, honey, honey, honey. There must be a pie cooling in the ship someplace. A pie? It's just a movie, guys. Jeez. Anyway, <laughs> thought we could read this letter now. Um, this it says, for rent, the Barco Rammer, and it's from Peter Spears. And on the back here, let's put that on still store in the back. It says, the Barco Rammer, indisputably the finest. It will ram, it will pound, it will press, 
it will do what you want it to do. And then he humorously writes, the perfect date for Crow and Tom, which I thought was pretty funny. <laughs> I accuse you, Joel. Now, carefully hand over the hamburger sandwich. Don't let them forget the French fried potatoes garnish. Right. Joel, you magnificent bastard, I read your menu. Come on, we gotta beat Marty and Messina, maggot. Well. Uh, what do you think, sir? Sorry, Joel, uh, didn't catch that. We uh, came this close to losing, uh, losing... Rodney. Uh, right, right, almost lost Rodney. Yeah. Is this uh, enough, Dr. F? Uh, no way, Frank, there's plenty more frosting to shovel. It, don't just go push the button, you freaked out maniac. Uh, look, Rodney, I'm sorry this whole thing got out of hand. I'd like to make it worth your while. To... Oh, no, that's, that's all right. That's, you've done enough. <laughs>